Hello everyone, welcome to Sunburned Albino Plays uh, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Happy Havoc Episode 14. I hope you didn't click on this episode by accident, because you're seeing two dead bodies right here. Um... Right. This is my fourth video. To I can't, I can't stop! I need to know everything that happens! So we have to explore different areas. It's a locker, there's nothing too remarkable about it, alright. It's a Venus statue, seems like something you find in an art room, nothing important here. Monokuma statue is the same, this statue is the same, all these statues are the same. I think we can just leave this place. What were the places we needed to check? We needed to check the physics lab and the equipment room in it. So let's do that. This crime's taking place like all up and down this building. There's a lot of places we need to go. You know, camera. Anything different in here? No, not related to the case. Gotcha. The dolly used to be in here. And the tarp used to be in here. We have a blood stain. We have somebody. Someone was dragged away from here. And we still got this hammer. Justice Hammer 4, the weapon that was used to kill Taka. Body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. Alright, we've got... There's some kind of tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. Reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire? Yep. Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms on the third floor, so definitely impossible. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. This tarp, I feel like I've seen it somewhere before, and just recently, too. Uh, yes, indeed you have. Did you see anything? Did you ever wake up? I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event. Mm. Alright. That's pretty much all there is to see in there. So now we're gonna have to go... to the nurse's room on the first floor. Please tell me that I can fast travel at points like this. Uh, second floor, first floor. Yes, we can. That's terrific. And Celeste is still standing here at the nurse's office. I'm gonna have to get her account. I still think she's behind some of this. Alright, so in here, this is Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Hifumi. Someone moved the body, but left the weapon behind. They keep doing that. Why do they do that? Is there anything in this fridge? After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick peek? There's a bunch of blood packets in here. For blood transfusions, I guess. Doesn't help me, though. I'm not a vampire. Huh. What about the trash can? It's just a normal trash can. Huh? Wait, there's something inside. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Ugh, but it's also covered in blood. Oh. Ah, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. A cleaning cloth? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would need to do something like that? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, me either. I think it might be important. Yeah, because if Hifumi woke up again, he wiped the blood off his own glasses and then threw it in the trash. Maybe he played dead when he was getting moved to the... I don't know. What are you investigating? Or, what are you investigating, Celeste? I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around seeing if Hiro might be hiding somewhere. What about you? Oh, you know, just checking this and that. 
The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. How Hifumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, yes, right? Indeed. Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? Mm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then, the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short mm -hmm. amount of time? It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Celeste's account has been added. Okay, that's everything in this place. What are the... Uh, oh, okay. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have? I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Um... You should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? Hm. You remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. All clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, so Hero's message. Um, so he said to go to Hero's room, but what's waiting for me there? Okay. I don't think Yasuhiro wrote that message. It looked suspicious the first time. If it's all been a trap, then this has been Yasuhiro's game from the beginning. Telling everybody to gather in the dining hall so that they would be... Um, predisposed? That's Sakura. Oh, Yasuhiro's over here. The door is unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Yaka, you did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the plunge. Wow, he's got a lot of stuff in here. This is Hero's room. There's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? Alright, we've got boxes. I think there's something in the cardboard box. It's blueprints for something. And some things made out of... It looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster? Is this Robo Justice? And it's in Hero's room! But wait, these blueprints, something about them bothers me. Yeah, the font is different. If Yasu Hero has that, has the really nice handwriting, then that's not how he would write it. And Byakuya never would have gotten Yasu Hero's message because he wouldn't have given it to him. So he wouldn't have known how neat Bia or Yasuhiro's handwriting was. I think, so Byakuya's trying to frame Yasuhiro for this. I think. But is he just a meddler like he was last time? Or is he actually behind something? Did he actually resort to killing this time? It's a normal bed, pretty much just like the one in my room. Probably none of this stuff is interactable. Anything in the bathroom? I soundlessly check the bathroom. There's nothing in here. It's pretty grungy though. How does a bathroom even get this dirty? That's everything. Ah. Makoto, big news, big news. What's wrong? We found Kyoko. What? I is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big just news. Robo Justice just showed up too. Robo Justice? It's Hero wearing the costume. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. To think Hero and Kyoko would turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. What the fuck?
Kyoko, and... I mean... Phew, man, I've had the worst day! Hero? Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool room locker. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. I still can't believe you kicked me! You could have been a little more gentle about it! Like, I don't know, caress my face or something? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind! Never mind. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? First of all, Hiro, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like I mean... that. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Well, um, I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing! There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces <laughs> off. Whew, free at last! Mm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hiro? So More to the point, nobody but Hiro would be able to wear that costume. Um, Wait, what? Hold on a honestly. sec! Don't bother trying to act innocent, the blueprints were in your room as well. In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. That's true, I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Happy. Then it's obvious, the one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone was Hiro! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Good idea. We wouldn't want him killing anyone else. D tie me up! Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. Right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah! I mean... Um, attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Please. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. You're the only one who can wear this costume, so who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me! Fine, if you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will! Without missing a beat, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Ha! Huh, see, look! See how loose it is? Come on, I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a huff, he took the suit back off again. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... No, see? It's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... Makoto, go ahead. Okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear Just this. A second. See? I told you it was impossible. You are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hiro's body exactly. Bye. Then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? The Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing That's anyway. Terrible. Which is how we know it was him. What? I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? She looks like she's lost in thought. Yakuya. Hmm, it's looking more and more like it really was a setup. What the heck? Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I've figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed. 
Taka and Hifumi. What? Two people? Why are you freaking out? You did it. I did not! Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed, that's it! I know who did it! You may as well tell us then. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it! I see. That's unfortunate. Huh? Unfortunate? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Um, I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so uh, I know! That note! Note? Um, Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Uh, but the last thing I remember is going to the rec room, then for some reason I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or this something. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Uh, really? Uh, I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage? A chance to escape? Someone wrote all that to trick me! Uh, even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? Yo! They preyed on my desire to get out of here! They deceived me! I still don't buy it. Well, you should buy it! Okay, then show us that note! With pleasure! I have it right here in my, uh, um, pocket. Uh, looks like I lost it. Yeah, sure. Please, Please you, you gotta believe me! I wouldn't hurt a fly! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh... Oh, what the heck? For serious? <laughs> now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it! Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, hero! No, it's like I said! Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke and that's why. Wait, that's a false accusation! Someone help me! Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you! If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? Uh, you're right! I need to look for the second suit and that note! Uh, feet, don't fail me now! I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko, uh, Genocide Jack, to switch with me. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled Makoto. away. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping. But can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why no. To reject me so simply. Anyway. anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the hey. living. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. anyway, we have to hurry, before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're right. Okay then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. Then I guess we should head that way for now. Was there anywhere else we needed to check? I think they kinda... gave us everything. The repository is in the art room. Uh, right, yeah. Let's check it out. This case just gets weirder and weirder. But the Yasuhiro account seems to be making things a little more clear. Uh, did Celeste do all of it? I don't know. Hifumi, and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. 
She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. I see. Makoto, I found something. Hey. You did? You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? <gasps> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So, then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6? That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Well, I'm gonna keep this waiting. Taka's irritated voice pierced ears. He stared pointedly at his rich watch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right! There's something wide in there! Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just, just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, Is does it? Right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Kiyotaka's scrap of paper. It's been what was Taka doing in here at 6 in the morning? Also searching for a alter ego like Hifumi was, but just went to a different place. So, did you find Indeed. anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper? That's right. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see? In his pants? Wait, so you... It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto, open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this! Oh, that's torn off! They're both... A note? I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds... That sounds very familiar. That's it! That's the same thing Hiro said! Then he was telling us the oh, truth! Wow. Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? Right, because didn't Yasuhiro go in the rec room? Uh, um... Weird note on my door, and here's what it said. I found a hole, maybe used to escape. Monokuma got my note. Don't tell anyone. Let's meet in the rec room at, at 1 a.m. So the timing is different, and the room is different. The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m., but the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on, just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped? Um, could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I, I have no idea. So then. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Hey. It seems like maybe they fought and they tore each other's notes? No, there was only one note. Taka had the scrap of paper. Which makes me think that Hifumi had the original note. 
and Taka tore it out of Hifumi's hand. So they, at one point, they were both here. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them, so the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Okay. Ah, oh, the trial's starting, shit. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we better get going. Okay. I think Kyoko is also going to fall under some suspicion here. Just for being a spy. It's going to come out that people think she's a spy. She's going to have to defend herself. For the first time in ever, actually. Same with Celeste, really. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna have this one try and go as long as it can, because last time, the two-parter trial was like two, like, hours, two and a half hours. Hopefully this one's not as long. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! Hello, hello, hello! He's multiplied? Um, nope, not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast, it only looks like I've multiplied. <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? <sighs> Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy. You're not playing along, along, along. Stop We're not here to play with okay. you. Okay, okay, fine. Hey, hey. And if everyone's here and ready to go, please board the pain train. Uh, the elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? Please. Oh, hold on. I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. I told you already I didn't do it. For serious. Mm. That reminds me. Did you ever find the other costume? Or the note? <sighs> um, well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. We there we don't have a lot of truth bullets. I have to I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here! Alright, let's go. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard... The doors closed on their own. And the steel box began to move. Okay, I de- So, I, let's, let's go over this. I definitely don't think Yasuhiro did it. It might- it's either Celeste... I still don't think Byakuya is gonna kill anyone yet. I think he wants to save it for last. He wants to be the last one standing, wants to beat everyone that way. So it's Celeste and Kyoko are the ones with the most suspicion on them. Except nobody actually has suspicion on Celeste, that's just me putting it there. But... There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. And for some reason, Toko slash Genocide Jill has just been floating around in the background, not killing anybody. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open. 
opening up onto a cruel fate. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. It's Only because of you. Mm. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What? 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 Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute! Stop goofing around and begin the trial. <laughs> Don't rush me! Of course I'm gonna start it! I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break! <laughs> I'd never hold out on you like that! Okay, let's begin! Get to your assigned seats! Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you- Oh, I'm just kidding. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a dead. You don't have to say it every time, okay? But yeah, let's save the data. Yeah, let's open our e-handbook. Like, how many truth bullets do we even have? I, ca I can't believe there there's, like, more than... One, two, three... Oh, we actually... What the fuck? We have a shitload! Where did they all come from? Damn it, it's gonna be even harder! Oh, this is gonna be such a long trial, damn. Okay, let's set our skills. What's the one we got from Kyoko? Increases the speed of memorizing a statement. Oh, that's actually really good, thanks, uh, Chihiro. Neural liberation. The focus gauge decreases more slowly during concentration and fever time. Nice. And those are the only three that we have, because Owie still hasn't given us hers. Okay. All rise! Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, if you can figure it out... Yeah, we already know, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, we know who did it. Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. No, because if somebody drugged him, they took his key and planted that stuff in his room. As having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Robo Justice costume, Yasuhiro's message. I think that's the one that's gonna play into it. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true! It's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Oh, okay, so we gotta wait for blue... Yasuhiro's message is gonna counteract the blueprints. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit cards, they are... There we go. No, Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints. There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he is not the only one. I think Hiro's innocent as well. What? Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? 
the suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course he passes it off to me. Say? Who was in the Robo Justice suit? The suspicious individual in question. The one that must have been in the suit. The Illuminati. I got it! Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit. And we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense! You just <laughs> said Hero didn't do it! It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? The things that were used to move Taka's body. They must have been. To move Taka's body was the blue tarp and the dolly. There's still one more thing. Oh, we gotta present two things! Oh, isn't that a new wrinkle? Also the blue tarp, please. I got it! They were... a dolly and a tarp, right? What's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? No, because I saw She's it there. raised an nice. objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Wow. I never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean. Maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository. A new element? Absolutely. Hopefully it won't play in. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking on and pressing the triangle button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the square button. Just like locking on, you'll have to press the square button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that the square button now is a function along with the X and square buttons. Do 
automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, but if your action difficulty is sent to- THANK YOU! Ha! Ah! God damn. You had it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool. So pathetic. Why is she so mean? Why why do your worst? Away with you. You miserable wretch. You had it wrong. She's being so harsh. All I said I was the dolly was used to move the bunny. She's like, no, you, you stupid pile of shit. I cannot agree. This should prove it. Yo, if my action difficulty was sent to it was set to anything but gentle, I would You're kill myself. You're asking for proof that the dolly moved. I have it right here. I didn't actually when see I what the. I found the dolly was. in the repository. One of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that much? Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. If I look at how the body was moved, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? Were the arms too stiff? Doesn't bend at the waist? Robo Justice costume. I think the costume is going to be it. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. Yeah. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah. The culprit wrapped the body in the tarp. Yeah. Then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off. That's right? correct. Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. That's true. Well, yeah. But even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. But you can't. Because you cannot bend over. In the suit. Aha! I did it first try! You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? Blind is bad in here, can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you it wasn't me. Not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? There's absolutely no chance that the costume... You can't take it off by yourself. John! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something you can't take off by yourself? I mean, I didn't make the stupid freaking thing. Clasp on the back that keeps you from getting it off. Looks pretty sturdy. Don't think you can get it off on your own. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... You really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, 
I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that Robo-Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo-Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now-deceased Hifumi said? How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo-Justice. Uh, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. Maybe Yasuhiro was like trying to get it off and he needed somebody to help him. So he, but Hifumi thought that he was like attacking him. He was like, what the fuck? There's a robot in this. And then Celeste is still trying to like set all this up. So she would, I don't know. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hiro, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. <laughs> Hold on a second! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right then, let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after 7. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo-Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo-Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... Well, I saw Shadow Sun moving around at the top of the stairs. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. So that's what's wrong. That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. And then... Now, Celeste, you fat liar. You liariest liar. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office while Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, 
We had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared! We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. Yeah, this was a gigantic wild goose chase. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Oh my god, when we have to make the comic of this trial, it's Which gonna be such a bitch. Which is where we the corpses. I will fail it. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Maybe Hifumi killed Taka and then somebody else killed Hifumi? The contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them no matter what. Alright, what are you gonna give me? Broken wristwatch, Monokuma file number three, Yasuhiro's message. Probably broken wrist wristwatch at this point. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? It was before. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. Nope. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! What?! Shoot! But that's not why! So, regarding Taka's death... Hifumi died, like, way later. I before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Ah! Shoot! All right, I'll let I'll just let it go to the end then. I wonder if he died before he threw me, or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after You're such an idiot. But then what's the problem? So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before he threw me. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. Hell yeah! All right, that was a shot in the dark if I ever saw one. It just really seemed like There's his no broken wristwatch would contradict that just as well. The same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Evidence that proves Taka was killed before Yufumi. The broken wristwatch. Ten letters? Well, I think it is broken wristwatch still. Show me the B. The W is in the way of the B. You fu You can't do that to me. Give me the B again. Give it to me now. 
I swear to God. Show up the B. Oh, never mind. It's just wristwatch. Wrist wrench. C, please. Thank you. H. H. The second letter was R. I thought it was broken. My bad. I got it. Papa's wristwatch. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. Hey, you are long to keep us waiting. Taka's irritated voice, piece the ears, he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, which means it was working. So if it wasn't broken after 6 last night, then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder, but all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. The huh? Well, what was that? It came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi is in the nurse's office. This is back. Come on, we gotta go back. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Don't just go making stuff up! <laughs> anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time! Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... Yeah, I still have no idea. Could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? Seems so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? He fucking walked up there himself. He woke up. He cleaned his glasses. He went up to the third floor. Oh man, yeah. There's no way. It'd be impossible. Well... 
What if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. God damn it! I got there first! The, the dead body m m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another ghost! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality, he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. The idea that Hifumi was still alive, is it really possible? Hifumi's glasses? Is that one of the things? No. Celeste's account? What was Celeste's account again? Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. Fuck. Shoot. Oh my I'm losing stuff Are you fast. Saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. No! Shoot! This is my last chance! Saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. Okay, I gotta like just let it, it play completely through. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. See, oh, okay, so you did have to throw something right at the end there. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I failed. Now everybody thinks I did it. Everyone thinks I did it even though I have rock solid alibis. Now everybody's gonna vote for me. Yeah, let's try that again, please. What the hell is going on? Oh, I get it. All right. No, I get it this time. It's You have to memorize what Kyoko says and then use it on the next playback to Celeste. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still a... No. Hifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body to Hifumi's dead, and that is why the arena Thank God you can fast so forward. Sure I'm about glad that. about that. Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Alright, we have someone else's discovery now. It was only made once. That much I'm sure of. No, I heard it twice. That when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No. 
Kifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body discovery announcement. A lot Kifumi's dead body had been found. Yeah, no, someone small. else's discovery. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Oh, exactly. yeah. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Second body discovery announcement. The first time it played was when we found each body in the nurse's office in the equipment room, and the second time was when both bodies were rediscovered. Just after Hifumi came back to life. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Body has been discovered. Yeah, okay. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, 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 I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. <laughs> but honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. There has to be proof that shows Ifumi was still alive. Yeah, it's the glasses thing. It is his glasses. Yes, it is. Goddamn right. I know things, and I'm gonna put them into action. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Ifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. Yeah. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong, bitch. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy taking you down. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And... I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. The evidence I found in the trash can was... Glasses. 
It, was it the glasses cleaning cloth? I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to Hifumi. Hmm. Hmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, he does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? Okay, that's gonna do it for this uh, part. Obviously, part two is gonna be uploaded as well. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and whatnot. Let's finish this together.